Have y'all been seeing what's going on in the world of artificial intelligence? Nvidia making strides powering basically everything, Microsoft and OpenAI continuing to make great things, Google doing what they can to try to keep up, and even more companies like Adobe implementing AI in their own products. With so much going on, I wanted to make a video going over what you may have missed. And in everything we discussed today, let me know what you're most excited about and what you'd like to see a dedicated video on, because I, frankly, I'd like to make a dedicated video on each and every single one of these things, but there's just so much going on, which is why I'm kind of making this overview video here basically because I I can't decide, so y'all decide for me. Let's start off with Microsoft and OpenAI. And if you don't know why these two companies are being grouped together, well then I recommend you watch my last video, or I'm not sure if the video is out just yet, it may be my next video or something like that, but it's about the relationship and how it's culminated over the past five years, four or five years between Microsoft and OpenAI. But the overall gist is the fact that Microsoft owns about 49% of OpenAI and is taking 79% of profits until it gets its investment return. Yeah. And gets early and oftentimes exclusive access to what OpenAI is building. Yeah. Don't get me started again. Anyway, you already know about OpenAI's most popular product, ChatGPT. That's old news. And we've already talked about the general idea and overview of it, but OpenAI is doubling down on it. On February 1st, they introduced ChatGPT Plus, a $20 subscription that gives you faster response times, general access during peak times, and priority access to new features and improvements, like their new release of GPT, which is their LLM behind ChatGPT, GPT-4. Compared to its predecessor, GPT-3.5, it's 82% less likely to respond to requests for disallowed content and 40% more likely to produce factual responses, or in other words, bigger number, better GPT. But it doesn't start there. For all of you trying to harness the power of ChatGPT in your own products, They've introduced ChatGPT API and Whisper API, which is an automatic speech recognition system. Actually really cool stuff, but obviously not as popular. Early users of ChatGPT API include Snap in the form of My AI for Snapchat Plus. I think the idea here is to be able to access ChatGPT on the go in an easy to use manner. You know, just open up Snapchat and you can use it because it's basically a chat bot and what do you do a lot in uh, Snapchat? You chat? But really, I don't know. I, I don't use Snapchat, so I'm not sure how to figure out the exact use cases for ChatGPT in Snapchat. And something super cool, ChatGPT plugins, which allows ChatGPT to interact with third-party APIs. Basically, OpenAI just introduced real-time data and internet connectivity. And when you put it that way, it sounds way sicker. Like that is something that all of us have always hoped for and wish ChatGPT can do, and now it can, kind of. Obviously, you have to plug it in, but it can't. Microsoft is obviously stoked on this too. So stoked, in fact, they fired their entire AI ethics and society team, and for some reason decide to refer to as or name anything related to AI as Copilot. Soon enough, they'll rename all of those things to Pilot because you won't be needed anymore. <laughs> It started with GitHub Copilot, the AI pair programmer, which just leveled up to GitHub Copilot X alongside the release of GPT-4. This update includes context-aware conversations, like how ChatGPT does by using context laid out previously in the conversation, finding and fixing bugs, helping generate tests, facilitating learning, which is exactly what I said to do if you use ChatGPT to cheat, so pretty cool to see that they included that in their announcement video, and integrated into every part of your workflow which is something else I said in the video about AI probably, most likely, definitely taking your jobs within the next five to 10 years. Oh, and one more thing, finally being able to center a div. An absolutely insane announcement was made on March 16th. Another co-pilot being Microsoft 365 co-pilot, which is completely tied into your Microsoft 365 tools, obviously, like OneNote, Word, PowerPoint, Excel, that one will be crazy convenient. Outlook, and something that a lot of people are most excited about, to my surprise, the live meeting recaps and summaries. It's nice, but I mean, the meeting probably could have been an email anyway. Well, no, maybe that's why people are excited about it, because they don't really have to pay attention. They can just check out and get the summary of it after. Huh. And Microsoft introducing your co-pilot for the web, AI-powered Bing and Microsoft Edge. Bing is their search engine and Microsoft Edge is their web browser, in case you didn't know. 
And the AI power, well, that's just ChatGPT baked into it. But it's actually a lot cooler than it sounds because instead of going back and forth between your browser and copying things over to ChatGPT, you can do it all right in the Edge browser. Or if you're looking for an answer to something, Bing will not only search the web, it'll also provide the answer itself or all of the information compiled together and linked to its source. So while I'm a bit nonchalant about it, it's incredibly well implemented and no doubt the next stage for all search engines moving forward. And Microsoft provides a perfect segue into NVIDIA's AI work since Microsoft Azure is hosted using NVIDIA's DGX Cloud for AI supercomputing. Look, if you missed NVIDIA Spring GTC, you missed quite a bit. I will be making a full video on how NVIDIA is essentially the backbone for the entire AI world today. So I'd recommend staying tuned for that one. It, hopefully that'll be up within the next mm, two weeks. Two weeks from now, I think that's the video that'll be going live. Because the thing is, what, what they're doing is not gonna get as much hype as a consumer end product like ChatGPT or something, or DALI 2 or MidJourney, or even like the Microsoft Copilots, because it's a B2B thing. But guess what hardware is powering ChatGPT and everything else that OpenAI is working on? That's right, NVIDIA. And NVIDIA is working to open it up more broadly via NVIDIA DGX Cloud, an AI supercomputing service that gives enterprises immediate access to the infrastructure and software needed to train advanced models for generative AI and more. NVIDIA announced AI partnerships with Amazon, Adobe, Google, AT&T, and so many more. They'll be working and collaborating alongside each other and of course, be the hardware they use. Again, I'm going into full detail here in a dedicated video, but I wanted to give you the overview of it. But that video will go all the way back to when the founder and CEO of NVIDIA, Jensen Huang, hand delivered their first DGX AI supercomputer to OpenAI in 2016 and making their transition from gaming focused to AI focused. But most importantly, what they're doing today and their plan for the future. I'm pretty stoked on that video, not gonna lie. One of the companies I mentioned there collaborating with NVIDIA was Google. Oh, Google. It seems they've been caught just sitting on their hands and now trying everything they can to catch up to Microsoft's OpenAI and ChatGPT. But that's not completely the case. Google has been working on AI for a while, at, at least internally. Remember about a year ago when that one engineer left because he said the AI was sentient? Well, just recently, Google announced BARD, their response to ChatGPT. It's an AI chatbot that is seemingly worse than ChatGPT, but that may be on purpose to avoid anything even remotely close to what their former engineer had claimed he experienced. But that's not the only area where they're playing catch up. Google also has a suite of tools just like Microsoft 365, Google Workspace with Gmail, Docs, Sheets, Slides, and, and a lot more tools that could benefit from AI. And as Microsoft launched 365 Copilot on March 16th, Google announced their generative AI incorporation into many of their tools like Gmail and Docs two days earlier, where you can ask AI to catch you up on an email conversation, help you write an email, build a presentation in slides, capture notes and summarize meetings, and a lot more that's very similar to 365 Copilot. I mean, it's an AI being integrated to basically what are the same tools, so I'm not surprised that they basically do the same things. It's just an interesting note that they were released within just a couple days of each other. And Adobe unveiling their family of new creative generative AI, Firefly. I mean, they are a creative suite. They do have to have the cool, hip, and creative name like Firefly, right? <laughs> And while it's effectively just generative AI art, Adobe being who they are, have actually taken it to the next level where you're able to work in layers and really drill down on the specifics of the image. Something where a tool like Dolly or Midjourney, even with its new update, can't. I mean, it kind of can in theory, but it's never worked out too well in, in my experience. But Midjourney overall is pretty good. I like it better than Dolly too, that's for sure. But the coolest thing about Adobe AI, it, some people may say the 3D renderings and things of that nature, but for me, it's the font. I don't know why, maybe it's just because this is something new and hasn't really been done before, whereas all the other AI art, I just feel like it's saturated. Every time you see one, you're like, oh, cool AI art, awesome. But the, but the font, I don't know. It's something about it, I just like it. 
And what's even cooler about this is that uh, Adobe AI is completely trained on uh, licensed or out of copyright work. So no art or work has been stolen to train these models. I'm sure there are many things that I missed and many more things that have come out since the time I recorded this to the time it's live on YouTube, but hey, I'm trying. <laughs> Again, if you want me to make any video in depth going over whatever AI mentioned here or something that I didn't mention, let me know in the comments because again, I wanna make in-depth videos about all of this, but there's just so much I, I, I need y'all to pick for me. I already have a few on the way, like the NVIDIA one and then the tools one, if that one's not already out, and then the untold story of OpenAI, if that's already out, but the tools themselves, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of cool stuff going on here. This world of AI is absolutely insane right now and I am excited for it. I haven't been this excited for something probably since I studied AI back in my computer science degree in 2016, 17, 18, sometime around there. That's what I emphasized my CS degree in, so it's so nice to actually be being able to see products and tools being released that are actually AI and actually usable, consumer friendly. They're actually good enough because for the longest time they were just theory, AI theory. I've read a lot of research papers on the topic and Aside from that, anything that was trying to be released either wasn't actually AI or just wasn't good or there's no applicable use case for it. So today is a, it's a fun day to be interested in AI and to be able to use the AI and cre create content about the AI. So I'm here for it. Overall, I, I'm stoked. There's no other way to put it. And uh, I guess until next time, y'all have a good one.